more. Let's talk to my friends, Brian and oh, Michael. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The old row. Lizard. The Adorio. From <laughs> Lemon Twigs. How you doing, boys? You doing all right? You record's coming out, man! You coming out with a new record! It's the greatest day of the year. Tomorrow is. Where are they? Hello. Hello. Hello, Brian. How are you doing? Hello. Good. <laughs> oh, yeah, we can hear you guys. A little. Hey. Can we get a little louder? Can we get a little Hello? louder? Get closer. How are you doing? There you are. This is exciting. This is exciting, man. You got your new record coming out. Yeah. Quiet, tomorrow? boys. Is it tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Wow, I love seeing you. I do. <laughs> <laughs> so we love being on. Being you know on what? The show. I don't know if both of you were on, but uh, maybe it was just Brian, but you're one of the first early guests of Office Hours so many years ago, four years ago. Wow. That was yes. Brian. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> this is an exciting new record you've got coming out. Songs for the general public. Everybody should pre-order and do whatever they can do to support my friends. Um, can, oh, wow. can, can I just ask you guys, I'm sorry if you get this, but are you related? Oh, wow. Uh, him, to him? Yeah. <laughs> Am I thinking him? Yeah, to him. Are you two related? Um, here's yeah. my question. And I'm sorry. This is, I'm going to do a little bit of a, I'm going to do a little bit of a Marin deal with you. A little bit of a memory lane deal. And I need you to just go with me on this. We're going to start a blues rock jam? <laughs> no. <laughs> Now, now I'm making Not that kind of Marin. Oh, Telly? What kind of guitar do you play? Oh, Telly? What, what are you, a Fender guy? I'm just too old for that shit. No, I want to. I want my audience to understand your background, where you came from, and how uh, you guys got you started. Because I just saw a video of you guys playing, like, that video came out. I don't know if it's been online for a while, but... You guys pre-meeting Rado, I think, doing some songs at like a talent show. Yeah. Um, so you guys, when did you start? Uh, how did you guys kind of break into doing this professionally? Well, we were, I mean, we were uh, kid actors. We were child stars. You were? Wait, I know that about you, Michael, I think. Brian, did you also do the work in well, that field? Had, I know he was, he, he I no did, success in, he, uh, on film or TV. Yeah, but he was on Broadway. Oh, really? Uh, with, in big roles. He was, um, he was Gavroche in Les Mis, and then he was um, the Flounder in The Little Mermaid, the, the biggest parts you could have if you were a kid. Really? Two, and, two things, two is he production. making this up? Was this no, they're no, not. No, I thought. <laughs> But Michael, uh, you were in a movie, right? I was in a couple movies, yeah. I mean, okay, so there was that. Heavyweights, Ethan Hawke. With Ethan Hawke and, and, oh, what and movies? Liz Banks. That's what we call her in the business. Liz Banks. <laughs> Liz Banks. And uh, Chris Pine. Chris Pine? Yeah. I tell you, well, I'm not going to, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about the stars. I don't want to talk any, I don't want to. Talk Were you track. traded in the uh, in the in the tra uh, the the trafficking of young <laughs> child actors? Were you part of that scene? <laughs> no. No. Good. Nobody had molested no. you on set. Um, no. But okay. So you 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 come obviously. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I can hear it in your music. There's a musical theater DNA running through you. There's no question mm -hmm. about that. Yeah. So well, you come from that world. Yeah, there there's like a few like Sondheim shows that we knew a lot of. We did a lot of community theater too before we got into the uh, professional stuff. But when you're in high school, you are basically recording demos and writing songs, and and you get that demo to Jonathan Rado. Is that who the first person yeah. you reach out to? Yeah, it kind of happened like um, we did um, we did the acting stuff, and then the then the we started to completely phase out of the acting stuff and then 
we were like didn't really have a direction we got with a lot of different people like there was the guy the guy who did the music for alvin and the chipmunks uh movie and <laughs> tried to make us into he like was a like a, a pop band he was a rapper and he said uh and he was like this guy who uh when i was like 13 or something like he they would get us they would buy us mcdonald's every week and then we would come in and then he came in one time with the and said hey let me have some of your french fries while we were listening to a track and then he yeah well, and then he ended up drinking the whole thing of the french fries ate the whole thing he was like a real was, crazy jerk you know what like, i mean that was a real this power. guy sounds like an asshole yeah yeah he was, was like, like a ron real... is it like ron not ron is it ron perlman who's the new kids on the block yeah guy? perlman yeah ron perlman like, he not was he not was, ron uh, perlman not um, Ron, per Ron Perlman, Lou Perlman. Right? Lou Perlman. He was like a Backstreet Boy guy. He wasn't the New Kids guy. He was a, his name was there wasn't Loop, bad. New his kids name guy was though. Loop Earlman. Loop Earlman. <laughs> Loop <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so so then, but then you were like, how did you go? Well, we had we were pretty directionless, and then Brian. Uh, well, when we when we discovered uh, Boxigan, we were just obsessed. <gasps> and really, we were like you know, the biggest. Boxer and then we were. I would have been fourteen, or, and Brian would have been sixteen. And then we would have sent him our stuff. And then we, uh, he said, "You want to come and uh, record record with yeah. us?" So then we met up in New York on a school break, and we recorded that. Uh, and then first we went. Album. And then we went to Los Angeles on the break, the school break. You had spring. Was it spring break? Maybe. Oh, it was winter. Winter break over the holidays. You are fourteen and sixteen years old. No, no, we were well, we would have been then 15 and... Fi right, okay. 15 and 17 years old. You send... You, you basically send blind, as I did, as Eric and I did with Bob Odenkirk, as people do. Right. You just blast somebody with your stuff. He loves it and says, if you can come out... Does he know how old you are at that point? He must. Yeah. I, that's I, part of it. Yeah. I, I, I mean, that was... I think we related to the fact... I mean... Boxygen they were really these, young like, when they did their yeah. high school albums that they did. So I mean, we related to that. Uh, so, so you, you'd make the whole first record during that break, or is it sort of a back and forth a little bit? No, we did two weeks and we made the whole. I did like a bunch of like string overdubs and horn overdubs <laughs> after that, but the, all the instruments. Just Brian were, playing all that stuff. Right. But all the instruments were recorded in that two weeks and most of the vocals. Um, but there was some. That is amazing. <laughs> you said horns, and Doug starts playing this <laughs> weird horn thing. <laughs> you hear this thing? Um, okay, and then you guys explode because that rec that first record of yours, I, in my opinion, is like it's got to be on the the top. It's got to be on a list of like greatest first albums by an ar by a, like an artist. It's like Thanks. so fucking strong. Thank you, Tim. Uh, <laughs> um, and then, so what's what's different about the way you make records now? Like, how did you make this uh, this new record? Was it still kind of a home home recording what affair? What a terrible question to ask. <laughs> well, we just did it. We did a lot of. Um, we went. We were jumping back and forth between here and Radio, Radio Studio, Studio in Los Angeles. Oh, I mean, you did a lot of it there. Yeah, the whole operation. I did a. I did some of it just at night when Radio wasn't wasn't in the studio using his uh, equipment and then Rado helped us a lot with the post production and we redid things sounds yeah. and everything it was a lot of like um oh i don't know the yeah. main difference i think is with our first record um we were so enamored with recording on tape and the way Rado recorded and we just loved the sound of his uh studio yeah and he was still figuring it out you know, um, but now, you know, it's a number of years later, and uh, Rado's studio is like. Everything's way, upgraded. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's pretty. Just developed a lot. Yeah, and, it's a uh, pretty, like. Our standards have, uh, you know, shifted. Since well, let's, let's transition to what we all want to talk about, what we all need to talk about, is your involvement with my record. <laughs> <laughs> well, we came okay. in for like a, a two days. Okay. Well, yeah, you know, these were big days. Whew, that's a big yeah, band. Got a lot. I have a little video of you guys doing a little harmonies. Huh? Can I? Uh, do I have your permission to play that right now? Sure. There's no. Sure. Uh, There's no nudity in it or anything. You're not. You're not. You know, saying the N word or anything. It sounds like a dope band. 
Um, I just want to show because that before I show it, it was uh, it was so exciting for me to get to have you guys come in and get to work with you because uh, I was just I'm such a fan and I'm such I'm really so impressed with your talent, like your skills. Now I'm getting excited. Um, and your in your instincts and your knowledge of of music and uh, you know we did a few songs together and then. You know, Brian played, did a lot of overdubs on the record, but then getting to see you guys sing together, doing these harmonies, like some oohs and ahs and stuff, but also to see the way you guys work together was really fun because you're brothers and you can, you're like finishing each other's sentences. And I felt like it was like, I assume you guys get along well, but it, it had kind of like a, like a, <laughs> like a raid, it had like a Davies Brothers kind of vibe going on, you know, like the kinks. Kind yeah. of a little, a little arguing, a little like, no, 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 you did like, it's, so this is the moment and we'll just play this real quick and you could see it. Oh gosh. And how did your hair get so long, Michael? It's kind of fun. Um, Let's, uh, pills. <laughs> it's a wig, clearly. Of course. All right, here it is. Can you play it? It's not. Oh, hold on. They're having an issue. <laughs> it's up. But it's kind of fun. Here it is. Let's go by. Oh, yeah, we'll see that. I don't like. So maybe. You can put it there. No, no I don't want to. I don't want to follow it then. No. Oh, come on. I'm not hearing it. Yeah, I don't hear it either. Now let's just do the original thing that you were saying. Oh, come on. Wait, what, what do you. I don't want to go. All right. <laughs> Could you not hear that guy? They couldn't hear it. Oh, no. Okay. Well, they said they can't. What are they? I assume that it was just some genius arrangement. <laughs> it was actually. It was very pretty. But but you guys are both finishing your senses. Like no, you do this. You. It's really. I loved it. I was in, I was in heaven, uh, working with you guys. That was it. Was a lot of fun, and the songs are great. It's a great record. And. You know, I think I said this, but the video for Fear of Death is, it's everybody that's in that video is, is on the record, but not the ones playing it, that song. So <laughs> that solo in that song, which is amazing, is you, Brian, playing it. But it's some other dude, Mike Bloom, pretending to play it. And he learned, you know, how, like, you, I showed it to you, I was like, are you okay with this? Because I don't know what the rules are for that. Like, it's not... It's whatever, right? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I matter. wouldn't have remembered you playing that, you know? I would, I would have just assumed that you overdubbed it. Because, you know, um, I mean, I think we did dub over. That would, which was inter interesting about that song was that we dubbed over some other instruments and it was like we were playing the live drums, and but it was a whole other take. Right. Um, yeah, we, you're right. We played over the original take and then took out the original stuff. Um, so what are you guys, what are you guys going to do? I saw you were on Seth Meyers. That's cool. Yeah, we did that. Did you, did you watch the show? No, I didn't. I just watched the clip. I just watched your <laughs> clip. I didn't watch the whole show. I'm not watching those shows. <laughs> that show is crazy. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, this is bizarre, but, but the, but the, uh, clip was good. How much yeah, overthinking we, from their side went into your appearance? Huh? How not, much overthinking not, on their side went into your appearance? Like how many, was it easy? They didn't do anything. Oh, yeah, okay. it was, it was no, they, the way, they, we could have done a video of us on the webcam, you know, whatever it was, but, but we wanted to, we wanted to do it cool. Cause we thought, well, it's going to be a pretty high production. Value. Right, right. But but then but we, then we watched the show and it's like he's on a webcam and everything and oh he was there no like oh right no, yes I see what you mean no, no, everybody was just you know I know you they know. still haven't figured it out they keep trying to like set design everyone's homes they're putting like a picture of a sailor behind them and really awkward with the jokes and then the no uh, laughter and <laughs> I mean, every all of those shows I mean. Yeah, they it really exposes the hollowness of those shows. Like when you take the in laughter, w the well, fake laughter out, you're like, "This shit's not they, funny." What yeah. they do in WWE is they put the whole <laughs> lot. <laughs> Sorry, we're, the guys are freezing My cold. My fingers are numb. <laughs> you know, I, we insane. also 
there's something we need to address from the Google, from the um, YouTube chat going oh, on. Uh oh, what? Which is they're calling us out on our inconsistency about shirt policies. <gasps> but I do want to clarify oh, that you're wearing is, a shirt. Yeah, they both have shirt shirts. On. But it, the way it's cropping <laughs> on YouTube, you need to stand up a little more to show that you are indeed wearing a shirt. Michael, can you just prove to our audience the that you're wearing a shirt? The nipples are covered. <laughs> I'm sure I'm playing pants. Oh. By the way, oh. there's no policy. I might allow shirtlessness. No, I would not. I would not wear a shirt. I, I, I thought. I mean, I thought. I just. I. You just can't see the thing. I will say. Go ahead, Brian. WWE, you have the final word. This is just what they do. Is they have the whole backstage locker room. They bring them all out and they react to things. So re they'll have wrestlers that react to if someone doesn't move, they go, oh, no. Oh, wow. And but they should do that with those TV shows and have the staff laugh at their own jokes. I think they do that well, they, a little bit, but it's not maybe the audio is not coming through well. I don't know. Um, but so, no, I, I'm in no place to judge other people's. Have I you guys the, explored the, what's the deal with like playing live? Like, are you going to do any kind of anything uh, like in a pod are you just not worrying about it right now you're just letting that go i just want to do more they records do that i want to be able to put out more than um one one record uh, a year you know um well listen uh, if we could I get more records from you that would be a blessing but i have to say i took john c Riley to see you guys play i took john c Riley to see you guys play like whenever you played in la last time we were like we wet our pants. We were flipping out. It's like you guys put on the best live show, I think, What's by it far. Like being as the coolest rock guy group. in town. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, that, yeah, that's great. It's up to you. Thank you. So I, I hope you can get back out there and the, and the audience can see you I in the flesh because it, oven in my it is house. just a good, it is just like a fun dynamic. It's like a, going to see Bowie back in the Ziggy Stardust days. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, congratulations on another smash. And well, thank you so much thanks. for having us on. Thanks yeah, I hope I you. see you in the flesh one of these days. And yeah. uh, all the best. Okay. See you yeah. guys. Thank you. thank you. Bye. 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 Let's hear it for the lemon twigs. The pounding. Oh. The pounding. What's up with, uh, no, great, I can't see people's names anymore. One, two.